welcome to Small Gold Analysis of the recent Fed decision to raise interest rates. Now, many of you are wondering why the dollar and the Federal Reserve still have credibility. So, why does the Fed still have credibility? Now, many of you are saying you don't believe the Fed, the Fed's un incredible, the dollar's going to zero. Well, that's because you believe that, you look at things objectively, and you realize that the whole thing is based on confidence. And if anybody was really analyzing it, they would say, you're right. They're just making stuff up as they go. But yet, somehow, the dollar right now is at 14-year highs. And the Fed no one is thinking that they're not a credible organization when they really aren't why is that well first of all there is no credible opposition to the fed because what most people do when they criticize the fed they go in the exact other direction the fed can never raise rates they'll never raise rates they can't raise rates we heard that all through 2015 and then they raise rates and after they raise rates, that's it. They can never raise them again. See what happened? And now they're going to have to go negative and they're going to have to do QE4 by the end of the year. I heard that from many of the top analysts talking about the next move was a rate cut. Now, I used to believe all that a couple of years ago. But then I started to realize in early 2015 the Fed is not as stupid as the alternative media makes them out to be. They may be a lot of things that aren't necessarily uh, fine qualities, but they know what their job is. And their job is to protect the dollar and to protect the integrity of the Federal Reserve. And unfortunately, yes, they have done that. Why? Because they eventually do what they say they're going to do. I said back in early 2015, I noticed there's a lot of de-dollarization going on. And part of the reason for that was the Fed was foolish enough to do $4 trillion worth of QE. And that really annoyed foreign holders of U.S. Treasury securities. It still bothers them. And they're selling to this day. But one of the things I think the Fed realized was raising rates, you know, putting bonds on sale helps combat that. Why? Because now they have to, it makes sense to buy U.S. Treasury securities because they pay a positive rate of interest, whereas all the other countries, sovereign entities, don't, and they're in negative. The other thing, okay, so as we go along in my thought process, I said in June 2015, the Fed will raise interest rates. Straight up. And they did at the end of the year. And at the end of the year, or also during the year, I, I made the claim many times. I said, sturdy non-farm payroll numbers provide the Fed with cover to raise interest rates. They were talking with Reuters, AP, all the, the mainstream media, solid job recovery, sturdy jobs, unemployment rate going down. Well, the Fed knows the, where these numbers are headed. Now, we may look at the numbers and say they're ridiculous, they're made up doesn't matter just like the you can say the stock market is made up and manipulated and it is but that's what the fed relies on and that's what the fed knows is coming down the pike so they can base their decisions based on these numbers and they were pointing all year in 2015 how the job market was accelerating there was a job recur it doesn't matter that they're part-time jobs there's no wage growth unemployment's going down officially and non-farm payrolls were going up and the initial jobless claims were going down so therefore the fed is emboldened to say remember they have a vested interest in saying what they did worked so they have to raise rates and in december 2015 they raised rates and i noted that the fed is very very clever in what they do they said all year they were going to raise rates and they did and then what they said What's very interesting about what the Fed did was, not only did they say all year they were going to raise rates, and then they didn't do it until the end of the year, but the way they 
play out their whole game. They know they can't raise rates and normalize rates and sell off their balance sheet. That's obvious, and all the alternative media get that. That doesn't mean they can't do a rate hike once a year. And I like to say that the Fed had said at the beginning of the QE program, when they launched it in 2009, here's what we're going to do. We're going to print $4 trillion worth of, uh, of, money, of dollars, and uh, we're going to buy every worthless piece of mortgage-backed securities. We're going to buy all the U.S. Treasuries as they come off the printing press from, from the U.S. government. We're going to do that for seven years, and then we're going to take interest rates down to zero. The dollar would have utterly collapsed if they had announced that intention at the start of 2009 when they started QE. That's exactly what they did, and the dollar is now higher than it ever was before. Why? Because they play this nonsense game of, we're going to taper QE, oh, we might not taper QE, oh, we're going to end QE, and eventually they end it, but it takes them a year. And then they say, we're going to raise rates, we're going to raise rates, it's a live meeting, it's on the table, we're going to raise rates, oops, not going to raise rates, not going to raise rates, not going to raise rates, not going to, and then they raise rates. Well, that puts everyone back into their following of the Fed, and they never lose that mainstream media, which they already, there's no way they're going to lose that, that credibility. And then they surprise everybody else who might be on the fence, might be doubting them, and they raised rates at the end of 2015. And I said at the end of 2015, what's next for the Fed? And you can look this one up. We believe the Fed will continue to push the concept that they're on a rate height path. They said at the end of 2015, they were going to raise rates four times in 2016. And I said, they'll say data dependent. They'll say the economy is improving. The job gains, that's what they used, will eventually boost consumer spending and inflation. And having gained credibility for raising rates that one time in 2015, they'll talk about it for, for about a rate hike for months, sending conflicting signals. They might raise rates. They won't raise rates. They might lower rates. But eventually, they will raise rates. And they did in 2016. We saw exactly what I said would happen after the stock market crash in January. They, they went back from four rate hikes to two rate hikes to when... Regs that happened, they didn't raise rates, but I said all along, they're going to raise rates. Now, I also believed a couple of years ago, at the end of last year, that they needed to raise interest rates so that they could eventually cut them and eventually do QE4. I no longer believe they will do QE4, even though Yellen wants to do it, and that's because of Donald Trump. We'll talk about that in another uh, YouTube video. Then in May this year, when it looked like there was absolutely no way the Fed was going to raise interest rates. There was too much going on. The stock market had collapsed. Brexit was coming up. And everyone was saying they can't raise rates. And men in the alternative media were saying they're going to cut rates by the end of the year. They're going to launch QE4. And in May 2019, I said, why the Fed raised rates last year and will do so again this year. Same reasons. First of all, they said it, and they also need to protect the dollar. They need to pump up the demand for treasuries. No better way of putting them on sale. One of the reasons people say they can't raise rates is the U.S. can't afford the interest. Well, that's true. They also can't afford to have a $20 trillion deficit, and they can't afford to have hundreds of trillions of dollars in unfunded liabilities. Well, how do they pay for it now? They issue more debt. Well, in a Ponzi scheme, that's what you have to do. You have to keep issuing more debt. Well, how do you issue more debt and get people to buy it? You put it on sale and you, and you raise interest rates. So that argument used to sway me. It doesn't anymore. Sure, the United States can't afford it. They can't afford it now. They never could afford it. Once you're in this far in debt, there's no argument that says we can't afford to do something. You already are technically bankrupt because you'll never pay all that money back. So again, in 2000 and last year, during this year, I said the Fed... Raised rates last year for the same reason. They've got to maintain that credibility in the dollar. They've got to maintain the demand for treasury securities. They said they were going to do it. They would look like complete fools, and they would lose credibility. if They said they're going to raise rates four times in 2016, and they don't do it at all. But they can always say it was data dependent. Other things happened. Trump got elected. Brexit happened. My cat ate the homework. Whatever it is, they, can, they had an excuse, but... Now they can say, hey, look, we raised rates, and now they got all the credibility in the world again, and what happened to the dollar index? Boom, way over 100. 
Donald Trump does throw a monkey wrench into all this. We don't know his full views on the Fed. and We've heard him say he doesn't like what they've done. He, we've heard him say it's a bubble. I've got some thoughts on what I think Trump is going to do and what's going to happen to the stock market. But the point of this podcast is to make clear that the reason the Fed still has credibility is, one, they have all the data, the U.S. data, they know what it's going to be. They have all the, the mainstream media. And then, unfortunately, the alternative media is so blinded by their hatred for the Fed, they don't look at them objectively. They say they're, they're, they just make them out to be as they're, they, they're never going to raise rates. They can't raise rates. They're going to do QE4. They're, they're going to go to negative interest rates. And they've been proven wrong two years in a row. So alternative media, in many instances, doesn't provide a credible alternative to the analysis of the mainstream media because the mainstream media just nods their head and says, yeah, the Fed's, the Fed's going to raise rates next week. The Fed's going to raise rates. And they never do. They do it once a year. But the alternative media is talking about how the Fed can't, the dollar's going to collapse last week, Schmidt is going to happen, uh, the, the Fed can't raise rates, they're going to launch QE4, they're going to go to negative rates, there's going to be Armageddon, prepare for what's coming, buy your gold and silver now, it's going to run out. Okay, the answer is somewhere in the middle, and I think that's what I've been saying for the last two years. Sure, the Fed is full of it, and they're not going to raise rates. They're not going to sell off their balance sheet. They're not going to normalize interest rates. They're going to yak about it, and I call them yak attacks. But that doesn't mean they're going to launch QE4 and go negative. No, what they're going to do is they're going to string everybody along like they've been doing. And unfortunately, that kind of stuff works because I did a podcast in June earlier this year. It shows what they do. Whenever they have... The markets are really fed up with them. They're starting to lose credibility. They're doing too much QE. They're not raising interest rates. There's dips. And then they have to yak it back up. But right now, having gained credibility and having the dollar index of 103, they don't have to go. They said they're going to do four rate hikes in 2007 or three. Probably not. They'll have many excuses not to. One of them will be the dollar index is high enough. Another will be Donald Trump uncertainty. Another might be there's somewhat of a recession. Who knows? The point is, you have to watch the Fed and think how they think, not how much you're against them or how much you love them, but what their ultimate goal is to do is to provide that price stability, uh, confidence in the dollar to get that 2% inflation. All stupid idea. I, I don't agree with the mandate that the Fed should be having this dual mandate of full employment, like they can give people jobs. And, and price stability. I do agree with price stability, but I don't agree that price stability means a 2% inflation rate. Price stability means no inflation. In any event, those are my views. I'd like to know what you think. I don't think that the Fed is en route to doing QE4. I don't think anymore. I know Yellen loves interest. It's going to do negative interest rates. All they had to do was stay one step ahead of the other central banks. And remember, when they cut QE3, QE3 at the end of 2014, Japan did theirs right away, their own QE, they launched theirs, and a few months later, in early 2015, the ECB did theirs. Fed also manipulates and coordinates with the other central banks to make sure the Fed looks better than the other ones. Fed's not doing QE. Fed doesn't have it low, uh, negative interest rates. All the other central banks do. They got negative interest rates and they're printing money like mad. And look at the Fed. They look prudent. And that's why they retain their credibility.